Welcome to the keynote. I'm Delatoro McNeil II, peak performance expert, best-selling author, and renowned keynote speaker. You're getting ready to journey into the lives of nine people from all across the country who are coming to spend the week with me in this multi-million dollar mansion so I can teach them how to become full-time speakers and authors, trainers and coaches. Public speaking is still the number one fear in America, Canada, and other parts of the world. You're about to journey into the lives of nine brave souls from extremely diverse backgrounds who all aspire to become professional speakers and authors in the lucrative industry of personal and professional development. I really want to leave my day job. It's time for me to take that next step. I believe that this is, this is the moment that I've been waiting for. Nine contestants have come from all across America to have the once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to be mentored by one of the best in the business today. They'll spend five days and nights in this multi-million dollar mansion, being treated like royalty and enjoying the opulent lifestyle of top professional speakers, all while being trained, coached, and mentored by Delatoro McNeil himself. They all have one goal in mind, to become the keynote. Each contestant hopes to prove to Della Toro that they have what it takes to earn a coveted keynote speaking opportunity at Della Toro's annual Leaderpreneurship Conference, the Full Throttle Experience. Over the course of five days, these contestants will be learning insider secrets as Della Toro shares his coveted 12-step blueprint for building a million-dollar speaking empire. Not only is he great, but he pours his greatness into other people. It was a good learning process, you know, being with your peers, although it is a competition. While being coached and mentored by Della Toro and his esteemed professional colleagues, these contestants will be pushed to the limits as they are tasked with impromptu challenges, exercises, and experiences that will get them one step closer to being Della Toro's personal protege for one year. Who will crack under the pressure? Who will win the hearts of their audiences? Who will overcome their fears? Who will become the keynote? Welcome to the keynote. You know, I know why every single one of you all are here. You're here because you and I have something very special in common. We have a passion, we have a purpose, and we have a mission. And that's to change people's lives with our story, our message, and our content. So I've invited you all from across the country to come spend the week with me so I can teach you everything I've mastered over 15 years in one week. I'm looking for one of you all to rise above and earn the coveted opportunity to have a 20 minute keynote spot at my annual conference, The Full Throttle Experience, but you're gonna have to work. Over the next week that we have together, I'm gonna teach you everything that you need to know from soup to nuts on how to build a powerful, purposeful, and profitable speaking and publishing business. Every time you compete in a challenge, you're gonna have an opportunity to win the mic. Now the mic is up for grabs every single day, which is a beautiful thing because the mic is a symbol of leadership authority and power in the speaking industry. Now, if I see you executing and you're not executing to your fullest potential, I might say this to you. Can I see you in the cellar? And when I say, can I see you in the cellar, that means that you and I need to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation that everybody else doesn't need to hear. And we're gonna go down to the cellar and have a talk. But I guarantee you, at the end of that talk, you're gonna thank me. Because I'm gonna share something with you that's gonna help you grow and develop. Because I believe that every one of you in this room are already winners. Are you ready for your first task? Yes. You all have exactly one week to pull off your first live joint success seminar. You have to pick a hotel, you have to pick a name, you have to fill the audience with your peers and colleagues, family and friends. Each one of you all will have 10 minutes to give your best content and at the end, the audience and I and my special panel of judges are going to determine the keynote. So you've got a week 
to pull off your first event. So it's time to stop talking and it's time to start doing. Who's ready to be the keynote? Yes. Let's do it together. Yes. Be coachable. My friend, one of the skills that you can develop right now that's gonna help you grow as a speaker, as an author, as a business person, whatever it is that your particular purpose and passion is, is your ability to be coachable, which means that you can listen to what your advisor or your mentor is telling you. You can take action, that's the big thing, take action on what they tell you to do, and then be able to receive constructive criticism without getting offended, without getting disappointed, without getting an attitude, and thank them for their input in your life. I've been able to extract some of the greatest coaching and mentoring from some of the greatest people across the world because I was coachable. And that's what I look for in a mentee, is someone who's coachable. So if you wanna take your life to that next level, my friend, be coachable. You gotta pursue this business as a full-time passion, not a side hobby. If you water it part-time, it's gonna stay part-time. That means your lunch break's gotta be consumed by what you're working on. Your evening's gotta be consumed by what you're working on. Weekends gotta be consumed by what you're working on. Does that make sense? I'm a sponge. Um, I've been following Dell for over a year now, and I expected this. I believe that this is, this is the moment that I've been waiting for. You're gonna have to go through a season of hustle. Write it down, you need a season of hustle. I'm overwhelmed of just what's going to be happening from what he, the training this evening. So it's like, oh Lord, what have I got myself into? Um, but it's good. It's just scary. But if you're willing to put in that season of hustle, I guarantee you, you're going to come out on top. The beautiful part about being in this speaking industry is that if you hustle for a few good years, you can create a platform that you can then sustain yourself on for a long time but you gotta be willing to go through a hustle season, a ramen noodles and hot sauce season. Does that make sense? Where it's tough, it's difficult, and you don't know how it's gonna work out, but you do. All right, number three, you gotta study this industry and work daily on mastering your craft. You can't be speaking every now and again. You gotta be speaking consistently, storytelling consistently, knowing what's going on in the industry on a consistent basis. It's deep content, not only just being delivered to you, but you're learning why it's necessary to go this deep. Everything from now on is what, y'all? I can't hear you, everything is what? Creates and sells products and services that their target audience buys. You need to know, you need to be intimate with your target audience. Who is your target audience? And you gotta know them like the back of your hand. When you hear Vicki talk about cosmetologists, you hear the passion, she knows her audience. She knows what they struggle with, she knows their pain, and she's creating stuff to hit them right in between the eyes. That's exactly how you gotta be. When you hear Sean talk about couples that, that struggle with financial challenges, you hear that he knows his market. Does that make sense? Yes. Who is your market? Are you in bed with who your target market is? Ira, you've got to know everything about the highs, lows, ins and outs of people who are in transition, people who are starting over, people who are old dogs but they got new tricks. Yeah. But my mind started reeling on the point. How are you going to define that so that other people can really recognize the message that I'm trying to give them? And that's one of those stones that I'm gonna to continue to work on. I'm gonna go up to my room tonight and study some more and get that point honed down to a fine, fine point. Email responder. If you think you're gonna be in this business and not have to respond to email and get a big check as a speaker, You've got it twisted. You really do. Right now, there's a little ooze coming out of my ears, both sides, so I, I, it's hard to tell. You know, I'm trying to, you know, weather the storm, so to speak, the mental storm. But it's good. It's good. All good. You have to respond to a bunch of email. I don't want to do that. I want to outsource that. Okay, then let the outsource person get the check. Client wants to hear from you. You're not in the room. Okay, let's keep going. Janitor, Jan so, so why a janitor, Del Toro? If you spent $500 to get full color brochures printed, you put, you put 100 of them out on seats, 30 people show up to the event, you mean to tell me you're gonna leave the other 70 sitting there? That you didn't, what? You gotta collect them jokers, hello, right? So you wait till everyone leaves. Don't do it right there, y'all, come on somebody. You gotta maintain your image, come on somebody. Wait till everybody leaves, all right? And then right before they start picking up all the plates and napkins, you walk around, you start, you know, 
and you put them back in your, and you take them back home. So how's everybody doing? Like, what's up, man? Is this like not cool or what? I mean, this is so fun. Well, good evening. Good evening. I'm Chef, I'm Chef Gaston. And your menu for tonight is, obviously Caesar salad, you already started it. But we're also going to feature you chicken marcella with garlic butter mashed potatoes, um, mm. grilled asparagus, and also we're going to present to you a dessert of banana pasta. Wow. Okay? Nice. All right, so en wow. enjoy your salad and we'll be bringing your entrees here shortly. Oh, didn't expect that. Really didn't. It was just fabulous. And that uh, banana foster. Oh, that was so, so good. The whole meal was delicious. The chef was so good, my wife would tell you, I don't eat bananas. And I've probably had bananas three times in my whole life. But I had some tonight, and I enjoyed it. Your number one job in this industry is not to make yourself look good. It's to make your client look good. So today is all about a conversation on what it means to be amazing. So while we're munching, I want us to go around real quick and talk. Like, when you think of an amazing speaker, someone that you, if you had the budget to hire a speaker, what are some characteristics about that speaker? And then, and then I want you to name a characteristic that you also possess, and we're gonna go around the room. Zig Ziglar is the one that comes to my mind. His ability to, to communicate and relate to people with his stories. Mm -hmm. He had such great stories and mm -hmm. his colloquialisms of his growing up that people seem to relate with. And yeah. I think I can do that with him. The first person that came to mind was Danny Johnson. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I definitely know that I can definitely be that energy. Mm -hmm. And I mean, even as I develop more, bringing out more like in your face, ready to go, let's get it going, the sass, because right. that's what Danny has. I, I think about Bill Clinton and his incredible way of communicating as yes. well as Tony mm -hmm. Robbins, but the one that stands out for me is Bishop T.D. Jakes. He has an incredible ability to not only connect with you, but seems to, in a church of 10,000 people, talk directly to you. The person that comes to mind for me is um, Joel Olsen. Mm. Mm. Oh yeah. Yeah. Though small in stature, mm -hmm. he's an enormous human being as a communicator. Yeah. His storytelling abilities, mm -hmm. his ability to communicate with sincerity. Yeah. Uh, he's casual, he's friendly toward people, mm -hmm. and he establishes credibility on the front end yeah. very quickly. Engagement is very, very uh, important. You know, I'm a very diverse person and my interest is diverse. Things I like to learn is diverse. So when I give of myself, I like to give variety. You know, you never know who's in the audience right. mm -hmm. that needs to hear what you have to say. But if you say it only one way, right. you lose a lot of people. Yeah. So the engagement is really important. Oh my goodness. I have not eaten that well in a long time and I ate the whole thing. I mean, the potatoes, the chicken, the asparagus, and then that banana's foster. You could have put a sparkler on it and I would have been deliriously happy. Welcome to day two of the keynote. Today you are in for an amazing day. I'm gonna be challenging you in the areas of building your brand, marketing your concept and your message. I'm gonna challenge you with the impromptu activities around getting quick on the quotes. You're gonna speak quite a bit today. When Del Toro mentioned that we were gonna do our first speaking exercise, I was a little nervous, a little apprehensive, but I was very much ready because I know that's why I'm here. So I was ready to go, but at the same time, I knew that the nerves would set in. Later on this evening, we're gonna be hopping on the minibus and you're gonna be traveling to a local Toastmasters Club where a group of about 30 folks are gonna be waiting for you all to give a five minute presentation and you will be evaluated using Poll Everywhere and we will select a winner tonight as to who deserves to win the mic and who is one step closer to becoming the keynote. So the pressure is on, the time is now, 
Today is the day. Bring your A game or you're going to meet me in the cellar. <laughs> Welcome to day number two of the keynote. <laughs> What I love about Quick on the Quotes is that it challenges speakers to speak what we call extemporaneously or impromptu. So what I do is I give them a quote, they have to then expound on that quote, wrap their brand or their story around the quote and get out. So it's get in, get out, but they've got two minutes to do it. So I love this activity because it makes speakers get to the point and say something powerful in a short amount of time. Let's see how they do. I'm looking for the first volunteer who's ready to go first. I volunteered to go first on Quick on the Quotes because I wanted to just jump on the roll and give it what I had up front. And it also helped get rid of the nerves off the back so I could take better notes of what other people were doing as well. Never give up on a dream because of the time that it will take to accomplish it. Because the time is gonna pass anyway. Have any of you here ever had a dream that you thought you wanted to do, but you just never seemed to get around to it? Anybody here? That's probably the first time that I've ever had to come up with something on the fly when I didn't know what I was gonna to have to talk about. And it was a challenge. When you learn those basic steps and you take that action, you can do anything, folks. You can do anything. Have you had that happen to you before? Thank you. Good job. I'm gonna have you do that again. I'm gonna have you do it again. Sure. Go ahead, go back up. All right. Footnote to everyone, get to the point faster. If you're gonna tell your story, you gotta be quick, you've got two minutes. In your mind, two minutes should feel like this. I've got 30 seconds to open, 30 seconds to close, which gives me how much time of content? One minute. One minute. A minute. When I first started, I felt fairly stiff yeah, and uncomfortable, and I think that was because I, my mind was kinda of trying to find its train of thought. But as that developed, as I'm talking, I kinda of felt like I got into my own skin. Hi folks, my name is Ira Funderburg. I'm a career breakthrough strategist. And I'm here to help you understand that you can do anything that you want to do if you take action on it. In 1993, I attended a conference with speakers, motivational speakers and trainers. And at the end of that conference, one of the things I had written on a piece of paper was that I wanted to be a speaker on stage. I got home, I reread my notes, and I put it in the drawer. Never took any action. 30 years passed. Those 30 years have gone. I can't recapture them. About three, four months ago, I decided it's time to take action. And I pulled it out of the drawer and I looked at it and I said, I'm going to do this. And it's three short months. I'm standing here on stage talking to you about how you can do anything you want to do if you simply take action. You are now and you do become what you think about. My name is Dennis Burke. And I was born and raised in a small I actually island. am familiar with Earl Nightingale because he's a famous author of the uh, audio, The Strangest Secret. <laughs> and I call on you to give me the opportunity. My number is... Start over. When Del Toro stopped a few of us, it was very intimidating. I said, oh no, I don't want that to be me. All right, two problems. One, number one, your feet are in the concrete. You will free yourself up mentally when you give yourself the freedom to move around. I don't want you to, you don't have to bounce around, but you got to get your feet out of the concrete. Okay, so kind of like an Albert Einstein pensive mode kind of thing? Just, just engage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you guys are true. One of the things I discovered early is you're going to get back what you put out. You're going to reap what you sow. I didn't want to go first. <laughs> but when I watched what the others were doing, I was able to kind of draw and say, okay, this is the direction I need to go. But I wanted something different. And I'm sure that you do too, and that's why you're here today. And I guarantee you that life is going to give you back the attitude that you've put up in the atmosphere. We are all self-made, but only the successful admit it. I'm Jenny Olding, and I'm a lifestyle strategist. I'm actually your lifestyle strategist. Because if you feel like you're not a success, as success is defined in your life, You've got two options. 30 seconds. Number one, you can stop complaining about it and accept your circumstances. Or number two, you can do something about and change it. A person who does not read is no better than a person who cannot read. Everybody is reading you. We all are a brand, and it's a brand called you. So when they see you, what are they really reading? Everything begins with an idea.
Everything begins with an ideal. My grandfather used to tell me, if you want to be great, you have to go to the best nation in the world. And that's your imagination. Sean was on spot. He just went with it and ran. I mean, you could tell he's a very polished speaker. What is it that's preventing them from making that shift that they desire? And I'm here to tell you that each and every one of you right now can go to the level that you desire when it comes to your wealth. My brother Sean is incredible. He underestimates what he has inside of himself. And I am so tired of seeing people battle and depressed because they are not where they are wanting to be with their finances. Great job, great, I mean, the whole thing was awesome. Thanks, sir. I want you to work on your clothes. Okay. All right, but great job, absolutely great job. And then I decided that I really needed to fit in. And I started fitting in only to find out I was really fitting in in the wrong places. <laughs> you see, I dug a ditch, a hole for my life. And after listening to a few of the other speakers, which I thought was a good advantage point to take, uh, I got a little more comfortable and, you know, started thinking it through. And it was a good learning process, you know, being with your peers, although it is a competition. Let me share with you how you can not only get where you want to be, but where you need to be. You see, the cure for, you fill in the blank is what I can take you to. That was nice. The cure for you fill in the blank. The fill in the blank statement was something I just thought about right then and there. You know, I didn't know I was going to go there, but uh, I'm glad it worked. Every one of us is the sum total of our own thoughts. Let me ask you a question. Do you have a crazy big idea, this thought, that's tucked within your head, in your heart, and you really, really want to pursue it. She was a little bit stiff on the beginning, but then she got into herself and she became the warrior on stage and she just nailed it. I can help you tap into that warrior spirit. I can help you pull out that crazy big idea and I can make it rebirth for you. So if you want to follow that crazy big idea, please call me. I really thought about my message because for them that was what it was about was really making that connection and telling their message so I did a little warm-up and it just really went out there and and really threw it out there that was awesome you did a great job I felt like you were presenting for the first 30 seconds yeah and then the warrior came out yeah what I want to challenge you to do is from the second you touch the stage that stage belongs to the warrior mm -hmm. Success is the progressive realization is the of a worthy goal. Is the progressive realization progressive. of a worthy goal. Success is the progressive realization of a worthy goal. There you go. Well, I was like, oh, Lord, I am going to go to the dungeon, which is where, you know, we get told you know, what we should be doing. And I was like, oh, Lord. And I said, if I'm the last one, then uh, maybe he won't be as hard on me. <laughs> My name is Bernadette Volkman, but hopefully we'll be friends by the end of this conference. You can call me Bernie. All my friends call me Bernie. <laughs> Success, boy, definitely is a realization of a goal. I was not a goal-oriented person all my life. I worked in the operating room for years. I enjoyed my career. I just stopped enjoying it. How many people out here really dread getting in their car and driving into a job that they really don't enjoy? Thank you very much. Good job, Bernie. Good job. Yeah. I know, I know. <laughs> you all did a fantastic job. I'm very, very proud of you. And um, how did that feel? Good? Yeah. You all did a great job. You guys did a great job. Um, man, wow, this one's tough. This one's tough. But we do have one person that I feel did an exceptional job uh, and has earned the mic. And I'd like to give the mic to Mr. Sean DeRoe. The one thing that I learned about myself is that I can stand amongst great speakers, a great trainer, 
and get up and take everything that he is pouring in me, everything that I'm learning from the other speakers, and I can instantly apply it to my brand and to my message. And that, that was the biggest takeaway. Just was just impressed with how he just flowed with his speech. So I was very happy for him. And when he was done, I gave him the high five because we're all rooting for each other and that's what we're here to help each other. I think you did a fantastic job with your open. I really loved your stage presence and your style, your confidence and your clarity of your message and why people need it. And one of the things that I really enjoyed the most is that you really did a good job at expressing the pain points. Yes. Not only the audience's pain points, but your own pain points. What frustrates you and why you created your concept. And I think that drew all of us in. You know, the person I thought that was gonna win was Nikki. I thought her deliverance was incredible. Her presence was powerful, and I just knew that she would be the one holding the mic. I was actually surprised when she wasn't. When I didn't get the, the mic, it, well, you know, it, it, it hurt a little bit, but it just made me hungrier to work harder and to really improve, you know, my speaking. You all did absolutely a great job. I'm very, very proud of you all, and this is what it's all about. This, supporting each other, loving each other, and doing your best and bringing your A game. And all of you all have something to learn from each other in terms of how you all present it and how you deliver. Be a business person first and a speaker second. You know, so oftentimes I talk to people who say, Del Toro, I want to do this, I want to be this, I want to have this, I want to achieve this. And they talk about what their passion is. And I'm excited about their passion, but the truth is, what gets you paid is not necessarily your passion. It's how you execute your passion to solve a business need. People pay people to solve problems. So what we have to learn how to do is be business people first and speakers second or business person first, and whatever your passion is, second. Because if you aren't a good business person, you're not gonna be in business long. You might have a great vision, you might have a great idea, you might have a great aspiration, but if you don't put the business, there, my friend, you gotta understand something. There is a business behind everything. I don't care what it is, there is a business model behind it. So what I trained my speakers and authors to understand is that they have to be a business person first and a speaker and publisher second. And I'm gonna say the same thing to you. Whatever you want to aspire towards in your life, be a business leader of that thing first and let your talent come second place.